All right, San Jose Sharks, you ready for them? Yes. Sixth in the Pacific last season, a 32, 37, and 13 record, putting up 77 points. Twelfth in the West, uh, in the West, Jesus. 22nd in the league, and second in the NHL with an 85.2% penalty kill. Uh, head coach is David Quinn, replacing, replacing Bob Boner. Bugner. Uh, <laughs> players lost. Uh, Anthony Batetto to the Panthers. Ryan Dezingle to the Hurricanes. Goalie Alex Stalock to the Blackhawks. And Nicholas Melick to the Flames. Nice. Uh, they have signed Oscar Lindblom from the Flyers to a two-year contract. Nico Sturm from the Avalanche to a three-year contract. Marcus Nudavara from the Panthers to a one-year contract. Matt Benning from the Predators to a four-year contract. Two goalies here, Aaron Dell from the Sabres for one year and Capo Kakinen to a two-year contract. Luke Kunin from the Predators for two years. Steve Lorenz from the Hurricanes for two years. And Mario Ferraro re-signed a four-year contract. Damn. One notable UFA, Jonathan Dolan, 12 goals, 10 assists. Mm. And I'll let you handle the trades because I'm out of breath. <laughs> Just sounds like it. So for the trades, the uh, San Jose Sharks traded John Leonard and their 2023 third-round pick to the Nashville Predators in exchange for Luke Coonan. Uh, the San Jose Sharks traded Brent Burns and Lane Pedersen to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for Steven Lorenz, goalie E2 Maki and Emmy, and a conditional 2023 third-round pick. Uh, lastly, the San Jose Sharks traded goalie Aiden Hill to the Vegas Golden Knights in exchange for the 2024 fourth-round pick. So, um, yeah, the San Jose Sharks were on an absolute signing spree. They lost four players, but <clears throat> they, I mean, who, there's like one re-sign here. They just picked up a bunch of players. It's, I'm loving it, actually. Just trying to, Sharks are trying to come back up, you know? Yeah, it's nuts to see them move on from Aaron Dell and Brent Burns in mm-hmm. one season. Like, that's those are two pretty decent building blocks. Um, and I mean, I say building block in the sense that like you can build a team around Aaron Dell. I think he's going to be a solid one B guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's necessarily a starter, but like if you maintain a one B, you can turn him into a one A. I think. And right. Brent Burns, in the sense that he's just a cornerstone of this organization, he's been here for so long. Right. I think a main factor in San Jose this season is going to be Eric Carlson. They really need him to step up and be the man that he used to be uh, on that blue line, especially with his. Uh, D partner Brent Burns being missing. Oh yeah, you're right. I didn't think about that. Um, I don't know. I think they that seem they they look fine. Kevin LeBanc, uh, we need LeBanc. Sorry, he needs to be he needs to come back. Um, hopefully come back and fully. Uh, what am I trying to say? Repaired and refreshed. Uh, he missed several months with surgery on his dislocated dislocated shoulder last season. Only played 22 games played. So having him back in line would be awesome for the San Jose Sharks. Um, some guys just need to step up, and it's just that bottom line, really. Um, I feel like I could say that with every team, though. Mm-hmm. The bottom line, it just mm-hmm. the bottom line, don't really uh, produce as much. But um, I mean, I'm looking at that third line too, and once you see two two of the four lines that are kind of questionable, like Nick Benino, Noah Gregor, and Luke Coonan on the third line, that mm-hmm. doesn't scream success to me. Uh, and I think that's when I start to get a little shaky because that's you know, yeah, your first and second line guys eat up more minutes, but you know, that's that's half of your forward presence that may not be too you know, impressive. Right, right. Um, I do love Tomas Hertel, uh, Timo Meyer, and Logan Couture, though. Like, those three guys really do it for me. I do like to see them a lot. Yeah. Again, we're just we're looking at a team that was like – I mean, you saw this throughout, like, our whole division breakdowns where a bunch of guys just got injured throughout the entire season. And uh, you can say the same thing with the Sharks, man. Like, uh, Marcus Nunavara was on IR last season. Uh, just – I don't know. I, I, they need to come in – that full refresh team and uh, really get off the jump with a uh, fresh set of legs here. That's that's what the San Jose Sharks need. And I feel like they have the guys. I feel like they have the roster to really get that done. They need to, like, come out the gate storming and really show, like, hey, we picked up these guys. We're a new Sharks team, really, when, with that said, and, you know, come out guns blazing. They do need to come out guns blazing. That's one thing that I agree with you on. Mm-hmm. I don't think they have the guys to do it. I'm looking at the net, and I am not very confident in a Capo Kakinen and a James Reimer pairing, mm-hmm. personally. Um, I look at the defense, and I say your top defenseman, in my opinion, should be Eric Carlson. I don't know if he's that guy anymore. Right. I do like Vlasic. I don't know much else about their defense in sense of you know, what's really going to impress. Mm-hmm. And then, I, like I said, Hurdle, Meyer, Couture. Those are my three guys. From there, I think there, there's a significant dip-off, and I put these guys dead last in the division. Wow, you put the Sharks dead last? I did, I did. And I think, I hope that they're going to upset me. But it's not too far off for them to fall. I mean, 
it's really banking on the Kraken to step their game up. But I think any other team in this division can surpass the Sharks, even before all of these offseason moves. Wow. And now after moving on from Brent Burns, they're, in, in air quotes, starting goalie. I, I don't think they're going to finish last, but I had nowhere else to put them, and I think that they're the team that can finish last. Interesting. I want to go back to what you're talking about with James Reimer. James Reimer I have here on uh, most games played since entering the league in 2010 with the Maple Leafs, which is oddly weird to me to see that. 2.90 GA and .911 save percentage. Uh, I you know, mean, you know what that tells me. The the stat you just said yeah. that tells me he hasn't been paired with a guy that the team was confident enough giving him more starts or even starts with the starter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So like either that or maybe he got injured when he was the starter. Like mm-hmm. that that's really the only reason. And and that's another question mark to me too. Those right. are really good numbers last year. Two nine and a nine one one save percentage, and then nineteen seventeen and ten record. Not very impressive, but yeah. the, the stats otherwise are pretty good for him, yeah. I'd say. And then right next to him, Capo Caco. Uh, sorry, Capo Kakinen. Pretty close in the same. So uh, he also he has got a 2.87 GAA and a .912 save percentage. So it, I feel like this is just like uh, two backups. Yeah, a couple of 1Bs, I'd sense. say, you know. Yeah, right, just like in net. They don't have that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even give him 1B, actually. I'd call him like a, a solid backup. You, you think know? so? Yeah. I think James Reimer would really need to step up his game or uh, or Capo Kakin is going to take over. Yeah, I don't know. I just can't put my money on it. And mm-hmm. the only team that I could see them finishing ahead of is Seattle, and I honestly flipped them just to flip them. Wow, interesting. What about you? Where do you have them sitting? <clears throat> so with all like the set, I know, again, we talked about uh, they're moving on from Brent Burns there, but uh, I mean, with all the signings here, you got Limblom, Nudavara, Benning. You picked up Dell and Kacken in too. Aaron Dell might might be uh, brought up and maybe yeah. Wow, we'll I'm surprised him. that he. Well, no, I guess not. I was gonna say I'm surprised he hasn't been, but right. You can't really start him over those two guys, I'd mm-hmm. say. Uh, Steven Lorenz, I like him, and so do I. I also like Luke Coonan. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna help out. They're gonna be a different Sharks team. And uh, I have some faith in the Sharks organization, so I'm gonna. I do too, actually. I do like I do like Greer. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Mike Greer, I think he's gonna turn some heads here in the league, and I think he'll get it done. That's why I got him shooting up to fourth. Fourth, you got him in the playoffs? Question. Well, maybe. Question mark. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I like I like the Mike Greer thing, but I feel like a new GM doesn't change an organization in one year. You know, he he's making a big impact by signing these guys. But it takes two or three years to really see how a GM has done, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. I guess only time will tell.